I'd say a private war is a portrait of a a truly extraordinary and yet um, recognisable woman. Um, a woman who is brilliant, brave, courageous, but also, you know, has the same troubles, anxieties and flaws that any of us do. And I think, you know, it, it, it's it's a story of a war correspondent. Um, and I think had it just been sort of hagiography or, or, or some sort of putting her on a pedestal, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be the film that, that Matt Heinemann or, or myself wanted to make because, you know, I think what is brilliant is about someone who can admit fear and goes through that. You know, it's not so interesting to make a film about someone who is fearless. The interesting thing is to make a film about someone who has fear and who puts themselves into a situation where that fear is daily tested. It's also, I think, a, a, a film about journalism. It's a film that, that, that looks into the heart of why people spend their lives telling other people's stories and what their belief is and how they, you know, the, the trust that they place in an audience one day to, to read those stories, listen to those stories, pay attention to those stories, and, and, and a particularly long-form journalism. It, it, it's, it's a film about um, a culture that takes time to understand, not a culture that gets a kind of quick fix of a, 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 a quick sort of beep on a phone that will make you outraged for a second without fully understanding. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a tribute to getting inside a situation finding what matters and understanding it. I think it's also a tribute to, you know, to journalism in its noblest form. You know, journalists, journalists can get a lot of flack sometimes, you know, tabloid journalists and journalists who hound people and, you know, underhand journalists, but there are truly noble journalists out there who are telling the stories that really matter and this is a a film to do honour to them. We want to show both the woman in the field and the woman at home. We want to show the person whose commitment to the cause was um, undeniable, um, who had a fierceness in pursuit of a story that um, made her overcome any trepidation she might have felt. Um, but we also see a woman who was haunted by the things that she's seen when back on dry land, back at home, because there is no way that you can be exposed to those kind of atrocities and not pay for it somewhere down the line. We also try and include Marie's wonderful, vivacious spirit. You know, this was a woman who, you know, entered a room and everybody was transfixed by by a sort of glamour, but it was a glamour that came with a total conviction of purpose, a kind of person who was funny, who was outspoken, who who was irreverent, who um, didn't take herself too seriously, and yet, of course, we know she took her job, you know, passionately seriously, um, was a life and soul of a, of, a, of a party, but also of a conversation, you know, whether, whether it was, you know, a light moment at a party or whether it was in sort of fevered intellectual debate, she was, she was committed 100%, you know, you got, you got all of her, all the time. Um, and, and that energy was, was, was infectious. She has such a cool voice. I mean, she has a wonderful voice and everybody talked about it. Um, she has a smoker's voice, which I don't have, um, but she had this sort of, she had such power in her consonants and in her vowels, and she just had this sort of, it's a, it's a Long Island sound, and it's, but it's mixed in with a bit of having lived in London. Um, she's a great storyteller, great raconteur. She just has kind of, there's a muscularity to the voice, which is, I, I love doing it. And, and it just, you know, it, it was a joy to be her. You know, it was really, because she makes everything sound cooler than I do. <laughs> The fallout from the war zones happens when she's alone at home. So there was a sort of energy driving her um, and, and me playing her, it, 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 filming all the, all the war zone scenes, which, which in London I had to confront the cost of. You know, I had to confront the cost of, of everything she'd seen and I had to go to potentially her darkest places, actually, in London.
the, the loneliest part of of paying for what you've seen and paying for the truths you've told. She had a tremendous disadvantage and she went straight back into a war zone. I mean, there is no way, you know, you, you have fifth, you know, you do not have your full vision. Maybe not, it's not quite 50% because you've, you know, you've got some, but, but I mean, you, you are very, very vulnerable on this side. And Paul Conroy, you know, will testify that he had to literally watch her back, you know, and, you know, they could get blindsided, you know, literally something would happen on Marie's blind side. Um, no, I mean, you know, most people would have probably given up after that kind of injury. Jamie was absolutely perfect for Paul because he, he was, he just, you know, he got on so well with Paul and he kind of sort of took him in. He sort of, he just became him. Um, and I think, I, I think Jamie and I are really, I think we're really, we're really proud that this relationship that feels very authentic to what Marie and Paul had is on screen. You know, it's not like you're expecting there to be a flirtation or to be a, there to be a romance. It genuinely is what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an intense friendship under very intense conditions that leads to a pretty extraordinary bond. Um, but it's not something you see very often on film. It's not, oh, will they, won't they, or oh, is there a bit of sexual tension there? No, there isn't. It's what it is. It's, it's, it's solidarity. It's trust. It's complete. It's having each other's back through and through. I love Stanley's work and, you know, it needed to be a smart, sexy, you know, older guy who could match her brain, you know, who could, who you just buy it, you know, and, and it needed to be an actor of Stanley's calibre, you know, and, you know, it's not easy to get brilliant male actors to play supporting roles and he did it and and he was totally brilliant we had so much fun doing it because it just it felt like them it felt like a, a mature relationship that she would have at that time of her life and he made me laugh a lot and Marie liked to laugh and Stanley made me laugh and Tony made Marie laugh so it was um it was great Tom Hollander um, who has been a friend of mine, and we worked together since Pride and Prejudice, we did the Libertine together. It was such a joy to work with him again, because he's... I love what he does. I love his subtle... You know, the subtle way he's can be humorous, cutting, he can be manipulative, he can be charming, he can be all the things that that character requires. He can have dignity, he can have slight sort of shadiness, he can do it all. And um, and he was absolutely pitch perfect in my view. Matthew is 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 an extraordinary filmmaker. Full stop. I, and, and it's interesting. It doesn't really matter whether he's doing drama or documentary. It's his storytelling capabilities. It's the way he edits. It's the way he gets inside a mind of his character. And I think he treated me as Marie in the same way as he treated those men in from Raqqa in, in um, City of Ghosts. I think he... Um, and it was very interesting for me to see a film of mine that's been edited by someone who's done documentary because I felt probably, maybe for the first time, that probably every frame of footage has been watched and he's taken every single little thing that all those... It's in the, it's the spaces between the words that really speak in a way, isn't it? We were so lucky to film in Jordan because, I mean, it was uncanny how Jordan was able to stand in for all these different conflict zones. I mean, I, you know, it's not a tremendous tourist advert, I know, for Jordan to say that oh, it was great for great for war zones. But, um, you know, a lot of these countries have, are tremendously beautiful and, and, and it's the terrain that was able to be so varied. People were most amazed that we were able to replicate Sri Lanka in Jordan. I mean, even Jordanians. When we went to the the forest that we filmed the, the Sri Lankan village in. I mean, Jordanians were saying, I had no idea this existed in our country. I've had some people see it, people who are not normally 
short of words who've who found that it's affected them the story i mean in a way that uh has left them with some sort of profound feeling of anger confusion sadness mixture of all sorts of complicated feelings i think which is a lot of the complicated feelings i felt making the film so i guess you know that's not surprising i suppose <laughs>